A lot of new and exciting characters have been announced for Genshin Impact, but there's something miHoYo isn't telling us, and this video is going to address it. It's hard to contain the excitement when miHoYo out of the blue drops three new Inazuma character announcements on their social media, and even more recently, an animated teaser trailer for Kazuha. And while there's a lot of clues pointing out what we should be expecting to see next major update, the real focus for a lot of players instead could be diverted towards the mysterious approach the developers have taken with one particular aspect of the game. And while there have been some debates made online, the gravity of the situation actually involves a lot of primo gems, the future of your team building and resources, not to mention the company's revenue, and its definitely something that needs to be addressed before we set sail for Inazuma. This, of course, refers to the current situation we're in with the Electro Element, or to be more precise, the lack of its presence in the game. It's no secret that a lot of the player base finds the element lackluster, or to be more clear, the reactions it causes simply get outmatched by the rest of the elements. But that wouldn't be the only thing that's peculiar about Electro, and you have to wonder why exactly we've been getting new character after character, and none of them seem to be of the lightning nature. Luckily, there's a couple of strong arguments we can base our guesses on, and it even involves all the existing cast of teammates we have already met. First, let's get the most basic theory out of the way, and that will be the explanation from the lore and some of the encounters we've had in the game, where the Traveler was told that the Electro Archon has made it very clear she no longer allows anyone to bear the vision of the element, and a year before the current game storyline would start, a vision hunt decree was enacted, and every elite soldier of Inazuma were told to actively hunt down for Electro Vision bearers, but even worse, the Archon herself stopped giving away visions which is the most common way any character would gain the power of this element. But you have to wonder then, how come Fischl, Lisa, Beto, and the rest of the Electro characters are still in the game, and while you could logically argue they are far away from Inazuma and haven't been the victims of the hunt, in all honesty, you could still introduce new Electro characters into the game and not make a big deal about it. After all, it's not like every time you get introduced to someone new, they have just unlocked their vision, when in reality, they've had it for quite a while. However, let's assume Mihoyo is truly playing the long game here and preventing us from experiencing new Electro characters, by tucking it all away under the guise of a lore-based decision, we still need to dig deeper and understand how exactly could this decision have an impact not just for the veterans, but also new players when it comes to Electro Element. And obviously, the next thing that's definitely worth investigating and understanding would be the recent 1.6 changes to Elemental Mastery, or as a lot of players refer to, the Electro buff. Well, it turns out this wasn't the buff for Electro a lot of us were expecting. In fact, if anything, this has been a buff that made animal characters stronger than before, with the newly improved damage calculation for Swirl. But to make it very clear, these new changes that were introduced in 1.6 basically improved the damage formula for the transformative reactions, and a lot of players who saw this first announced a few months ago expected to see these changes affect Electro in a positive way, but then reality kicked in, and we realized it's not the damage that needs to be adjusted for Electro, but instead, the inconsistent nature of the reactions themselves were the culprit behind Electro's not-so-optimal performance. And it's kind of easy to see why. Mihoyo designed three reactions that this element can have, and only Superconduct manages to achieve what the development team set out for it, and there's no better way to get this suspicion confirmed than by looking at some of the most recent Spiral Abyss team compositions, where Electro teammates were most often used together with Eula for that sweet physical resistance reduction. So, what's the problem? Well, the remaining two reactions suffer from their own unique downfalls while providing big damage numbers in exchange. For Electro Charged, the key problem would be consistency, because the only character who triggers the reaction applies their own elemental mastery for the damage calculation. However, because triggering Electro Charged with the current cast of Hydro and Electro characters is chaotic to say the least, it's extremely hard or near impossible to have the character that you want to act as a triggerer. As you can see from here, just by having Xingqiu and Lisa together acting as a duo for Electro Charge, it's sometimes the book nerd, sometimes the librarian that triggers, and it's never clear why this happens, even if there is an explanation for it, but it's outside of the scope of the video, and the main idea is that there is a very small timing window where you can trigger the reaction with the active character you're using, but practicing it when going up against a lot of aggressive enemies isn't something a lot of players are willing to do. Finally, for those who might bring child fireworks or some variation into it as a valid usage for Electro Charge, it is quite true it's an amazing team comp that takes advantage of it, but let's be honest, due to its incon 
consistency, it's never clear who will be triggering the reaction next due to so many things happening and the real reason why the team is strong is because of some of the constellations and standalone damage you can get from all of these four characters. Now for Overload, while the damage got seriously boosted and even for someone like Lisa, it became a legit way to deal a good amount of damage. The biggest drawback of it would be the internal cooldown of the elemental applications or in other words, you can't just go and trigger Overloads one after another because, well, that's not entirely clear but the developers have programmed the game in such a way. So as you can see here, you should be getting an overload on this Pyro Slime each hit even if the damage comes out as immune. We only see this happen once a few seconds because of the way the internal cooldown works, which isn't a topic for this video, but you can learn more about it in the video's description. So when you look at it from this perspective, maybe it makes sense why Mihoyo still hasn't released any new Electro characters and you could argue the way the reactions work right now are disappointing to say the least, but it's also easy to forget that Genshin's success stems from many things, like the fact that it's a free open world game, has insanely good music and art direction, not to mention there's literally thousands of people who admire and are fans of many characters the game has released so far. Still, you can't help but wonder how Mihoyo sees this whole situation with Electro's weird nature of reactions, and they obviously care about the game's balance, or at least are afraid of upsetting a lot of players since the whole thing that went down with Zhongli's 1.1 incident. So when you have a new region coming out, and more importantly, a new Archon they will be presenting us with, it's hard to guess what approach they will take. So in essence, the main takeaway would be that out of three possible reactions, only Superconduct works consistently and without any problems, while the same could not be said about the Overload and Electro Charge reactions. What's even more ironic, you don't even need Elemental Mastery for Superconduct because the damage is so irrelevant, while the real winners of the 1.6 buff are animal characters, and now a lot of players are enjoying their new and improved Sucrose, Venti, Traveler, even Jean and Xiao, not to mention the upcoming Samurai Boy Kazuha, who will surely take advantage of this newest change, and you could even speculate and say that the real reason why these changes came into effect would be to put Kazuha into a more better spotlight when we saw from the livestream how many times he will be swirling. But even if you look at it this way, there's still one thing that needs to be addressed. Look, it's pretty clear at this point something big is going to be happening soon enough, and for a region that's all about exploring the nature of Electro, its Archon and many other things that surround it, everyone's going to be getting exposed to this particular element, whether they want it or not. Judging from the past two regions we saw, where the inclusion of the element was a big driving force for the exploration. Now you could argue, since world exploration is such a piece of cake activity, it won't matter if overloads trigger slowly, or Electro Charge reactions are inconsistent, there is no timer ticking away, and no reward depend on how fast you can solve a puzzle or gather materials, but it's clear we're going to be unraveling the gruesome secret of why exactly the Archon has decided to take away everyone's visions, so maybe it is just a cool way for the game's lore to dictate the release schedule of new characters, and maybe that's why we didn't get to see any new Electro characters announced, but even then, it's pretty clear there's some problems with the elements, and at the end of the day, this is still a gacha game where the business model heavily relies on whales and people who pay more than the average player, and for a lot of them, constellations are a big part of their spending habits, which in return means power matters to them, and if power is going to be inconsistent, then there's surely going to be some changes made at some point in game's lifetime. Honestly, this might not matter in the nearest future, because we will get to relive the joy of exploration, and we have already seen how much fun it is with just a little taste test for the 1.6 Archipelago Islands, which are by the way getting removed after the next update arrives, which makes you wonder where exactly the new world boss gets placed, or the weird water plants we've been gathering so far, but once we're done with exploring and start to wait for another region that could take up to a year again, it will be hard not to ignore the current design with Electro unless Mihoyo does something about it. Either way, it's not like you cannot build an Electro character right now. They are definitely amazing, like Fischl and her support damage, Beta with her amazing burst, and Razor single-handedly carrying the torch as the go-to 4-star physical damage dealer that only gets scared of Eula's white numbers and Shongling's crescent pike. And yet, that's basically Electro's situation we have right now. It's probably something that's worth to think about, and there's arguments to be found both from gameplay and lore perspectives, so it's now a question whether we will see this getting resolved by Mihoyo through their main storyline or simply by a text announcement in a patch note, but whatever the decision is, one thing is clear, Inazuma has got a lot of us excited and it's hard not to care about the well-being of the game.
If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel with bell notifications on, and don't forget to gently press the like button. A lot of guides, news, and topical discussions get covered on this channel, but you can also get bite-sized impressions by following the channel on Twitter, link in the description. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.